morning and a very warm welcome to you on this Sunday, the 6th of February. Uh, just a couple of notices before we get going. Firstly, I spoke last week about the uh, Lent course that's coming up uh, starting next month, and it is The Long Road to Heaven. It's not a new Lent course, in other words, it hasn't come out this year, but it is a good Lent course. And it's based on the film called The Way, uh, which stars Michael Sheen. Um, and it's it's a very good film, uh, very thought provoking. And the course is uh, well worth doing. So if you'd like to sign up, um, if you uh, would like to come out, it's going to be on a Tuesday evening at 7.30 for the six weeks of Lent. So we're going to have a preview of the film a few days beforehand, uh, but it's our course starts on the, uh, I think it's the 8th of March, if I've got that correct. Right. The other thing to say is if you are um, still planning to give to our fifth Sunday uh, charity giving, which of course was last Sunday, our, our giving for the first fifth Sunday of the year is to Norwich Youth for Christ. And if you'd like to still give, uh, you can do so. Uh, please make your uh, check or um, bank uh, transfer uh, payable to both up church and we will collect them all the giving together and then send that off as a, a gift to Norwich Youth for Christ. So uh, that's if you would still like to give there is just an opportunity to do so this is the final week and uh, it'd be great if you could do that. Well we come to uh, our uh, service for today and we are thinking about uh, the young Jesus. And we read these words in scripture. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Well, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come with praise on our lips and love in our hearts. You are holy and just, faithful and true, worthy of our worship. At this time, we come to praise your holy name, but we come knowing that we've not lived according to your ways of justice and love. And so we confess our sins. Forgive us, Lord, wash us clean from our sin and help us to walk in your ways of truth and love. Amen. Well, the promise of the Bible is that if we confess our sins, God will forgive us and he, uh, he will forgive us because he is faithful and just. So he says to each one of us, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, don't forget that you can still um, send your uh, offerings in, your uh, weekly or monthly giving. Uh, if you're not doing that directly by your bank, you can do that. But we're now going to pray an offertory prayer. Loving God, accept these gifts, along with the praise of our lives and the love of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, I wonder, have you ever got lost? Have you ever been lost in a crowd? Have you ever uh, turned around and found that your parents weren't there? Well, we are thinking about the young Jesus and how uh, at one point he was apparently lost. We turn to our reading today, which is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. And I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Every year, the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went to the festival as usual. When the festival was over, they started back home, but the boy Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. His parents did not know this. They thought he was going, that he was with the group. 
So they traveled a whole day, then started looking for him among their relatives and friends. They did not find him. So they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. On the third day, they found him in the temple, sitting with the Jewish teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his intelligent answers. His parents were astonished when they saw him and his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. He answered them, why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand his answer. So Jesus went back with them to Nazareth, where he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew both in body and in wisdom, gaining favour with God and people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was young, I walked to school with my brothers. It was about a mile away. And we had to cross a major road. We became so familiar with the route that it was never a problem. In fact, there were even times when I did the route on my own. I never felt unsafe or in danger. I was taught how to cross the road. I knew how to cross safely, to look out for cars, not to run, all that kind of stuff. Today, many parents drive their children to school because they're worried about all kinds of dangers that might be waiting for them. I understand that fear, and I have, you know, driven my children to school at times. This is not uh, a message uh, castigating parents of driving their children to school, by the way. This is a message about two parents, Mary and Joseph, who were happy to set off for home, having been in Jerusalem for the Passover. It was something they did every year. As we read in verse 41, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Although it was mandatory for all Jewish men aged 13 and above to attend the three great Jewish festivals of Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles, it was not a requirement for women or children. Yet here we see Joseph and Mary and Jesus attending the festival, which testifies, I think, to Mary's deep devotion, her desire to be in the house of God. This was a family event, and it was significant, as in another year's time, Jesus would officially become known as a son of the commandment, a full member of the synagogue. But for now, the 12-year-old boy would have seen the city jostling with people, merchants selling their wares. He would have experienced the excitement of a major festival. The week probably would have flown by for the young Jesus. His mind absorbed by the Passover, the temple and the Torah. He was probably so absorbed that it says in verse 43, after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Now, some might ask, how come Mary and Joseph didn't know Jesus was with them? Well, of course, in those days, you didn't just go as a sort of nuclear family. You went with the, your extended family. The word in verse 44 uh, for company was used to describe a, a traveling group of people, the large number would have been useful in keeping uh, everyone safe, particularly the children. Also, it's more fun when you go as a large group together on a journey. Imagine going to maybe the seaside with all your relatives uh, and you know the children are there wanting ice creams, teenagers fed up because they didn't really want to come in the first place and on, on their devices. Parents keeping an eye out for the children as they play in the sand or in the sea. Maybe it's not something that you'd find enjoyable. 
but then you make your way back to your accommodation. But your preteen is nowhere to be seen, not answering their phone, of course, quite usual. You wonder where on earth he's gone, whether or not he's safe, and how you can find him. Now, up to this point, Jesus hadn't given Mary and Joseph any cause for concern. So imagine, knowing that Jesus was God's son and losing him in Jerusalem. When they realized their son wasn't with them, Mary and Joseph returned to Jerusalem. Now, it took three days for them to find him. Three days. Of course, Mary and Joseph had gone a day before they realized that Jesus wasn't with them, then a further day returning to Jerusalem, and then a third day locating their son. In fact, in our reading it says in verse 46, on the third day they found him in the temple. I wonder whether Luke wants us to see more in this story than meets the eye. Even at this point, Luke is pointing us to the cross and to the empty tomb on the third day. So Jesus was eventually found in the temple, sitting in, you know, discussing the law of the Lord with the uh, religious teachers. Luke tells us that all who heard Jesus were amazed at his intelligent answers. His understanding at such an age was extraordinary. Now, Jesus' parents were not from a highly educated background, but they were astonished when they saw him. They were also hurt by his actions. Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. It's a kind of normal reaction any parent would feel if they'd lost their child for three days. Here Jesus' uh, answer are the first recorded words we have of Jesus in Luke's gospel. Why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? So even at this young age, even before he's made a son of the commandment, Jesus referred to God as his father, the temple as his father's house. Luke again is letting us into the uni unique relationship of Jesus with God. Even before he turned 13, he understood something of the unique relationship that he had with his heavenly father. Here he is in his father's house. Later on, he'll be about his father's business. Now, to grasp the radical nature of Jesus' words here in Luke 2 and the growing self-understanding of Jesus, we need to understand that in the 39 books of the Old Testament, God is referred to as Father just 14 times. And even then, often quite impersonal, that the word Father is used in reference to the nation, not to individuals. God was called Abraham's Father. But Abraham didn't call God his father. Jesus, at 12, grasped something no one before him had grasped. More than 60 times the gospel recorded Jesus calling God father. And in these first recorded words of Jesus, we see his growing awareness of who he is. And what's more, this awareness was announced in the Jerusalem temple. The place was that was at the very heart of Israel's faith. Now, what point is Luke making? Well, that Jesus is God's son. Now, some say, oh, everyone became aware he was God's son at his baptism. Well, Jesus was aware even at this point. God is his father. In the year before entering adulthood, Jesus knew who he was. And that realization would become evident to the whole world in 18 years after this. Mary and Joseph didn't understand all this, Luke tells us. Despite her great faith and humility, it would take Mary years to comprehend all this. But for now, all she wanted was obedience from her son. And that's what we hear happened. 
It says, so Jesus went back with them to Nazareth, where he was obedient to them. And his mother Mary treasured all these things in her heart. What was the result of this obedience? It says Jesus grew both in body and wisdom, gaining favor with God and people. And the word translated favor here is the Greek word charis, meaning grace. Jesus was graced in his relationship with God the Father, graced in his relationship with people. Grace characterized his relationships, both horizontally and vertically. The way for us to grow with God in grace is to be or to have an obedient spirit, a willing submission to God and a hunger to seek him. Being obedient to God comes out of knowing who we are. Jesus understood at 12 years old. For some of us, it takes a lot longer. But Jesus knew who he was in relation to God, and that awareness showed in submissiveness to God, his father, and also to his earthly parents. So I finish by asking, do you know who you are? If so, will you submit to God and for his plan for your life? If you do so, you'll be walking in grace and will grow in grace. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank and praise you for your love, for you love us with an everlasting love. And you sent your son to be our savior, to show us your grace. Help us to grow in your grace, being willing to submit to your plans and purposes. And Father, we pray for parents who carry this responsibility of bringing up children. Especially we pray for lone parents. Be with parents struggling to juggle childcare and work. Parents struggling to make ends meet. Father, we pray for children growing up in unusual times, having to learn at home rather than at school. Be with children struggling with uh, home education. Those who struggled with school. And we pray especially for young carers who have to juggle caring for a parent, a relative and school life. Lord, we pray for the wider world in all its troubles. We pray at this time for Myanmar the democracy would be restored, that the elected government would be released and peace and justice would prevail. We pray too for tensions between Russia, Ukraine and the West to be diminished, for, uh, for there to be a resolution of grace rather than war. Father, we pray for all those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for those around the world who today need the courage to stand up for you, to know who they are in you. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we close by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Don't forget, if you want to give to Nod Youth of Christ, please do so this week. 
And also, if you want to sign up for the Lent course, uh, please do so as soon as you can so I can order uh, books, uh, the right books for you. OK, so good to be with you and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.